Hey folks, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at how to form a PN junction. So let's get started. So before we look at the process of forming a PN junction, we need to look at what a PN junction actually is first of all. So it says that when a piece of P-type material is grown together with a piece of N-type material, a PN junction is formed. And remember the P-type and N-type just refers to how that material has been doped. And it then says to note that this is often referred to as a PN junction diode or simply a diode for short. So here we've got a picture of a PN junction diode with a P-type and N-type semiconductor material grown together. And then here we've got a circuit symbol for for a diode, which basically looks like an LED without the little arrows for the light. So we've got this kind of triangle shape with the thicker straight line here. So we'll now look at the steps of how you would form a PN junction. So firstly, before the junction is made, the P-type and N-type materials are separate as shown below. So let's say we've got our P-type material on the left with holes inside there being the majority charge carriers and we've got our N-type material on the right with electrons being the majority charge carriers in there. Now remember there will also be electrons in the P-type and holes in the N-type but we've not drawn those because they're not really important for this process. Then when the N-type and P-type materials are brought close together, some free electrons from the N-type material diffuse across the junction and fill some of the holes in the P-type material. So here you can see the two types of materials have been brought closer together and we've got the electrons there diffusing across the junction which is just the separation between the two types and these are filling at some of the holes in the P-type material. It then says that because the N-type has lost electrons, it becomes positively charged near the junction. The P-type having gained electrons becomes negatively charged near the junction. So if we go back to this picture here, we're saying that because electrons have started filling holes at this point here in the P-type, then this part becomes more negatively charged. So we could say that this side will have a negative charge built up. And then on this side of the junction, we've actually got an absence of electrons, which we could call a positive charge. So this side will become positively charged. And we've actually got this in the diagram down here. So here we've got a positively charged region on the right and a negatively charged region on the left. Now it then says due to this charge separation, a small potential barrier and therefore electric field forms across the junction. So you might remember that an electric field will be set up whenever you've got two oppositely charged parallel plates or two oppositely charged parallel regions here. And we say that this potential difference or voltage produced tends to oppose any further movement of charge across the junction. And the region around the junction here consists of filled holes, i.e. no free charge carriers. And therefore this region is called the depletion region also known as the depletion layer. So here we've got the depletion region where we've got no free charge carriers and we've got this side being positively charged and this side being negatively charged. So in this way we've created a PN junction where no charge carriers can flow across the junction. However, we will see that the electrical properties of the PN junction are used in a number of devices, for example diodes, LEDs and solar cells, where charge can be made to actually flow across the junction in one way. And diodes, remember, are devices that allow current to flow through them in one direction only. Just to help summarise the steps here, I'm going to show you a quick simulation. So if we start with our separate P-type and N-type materials that are both neutral, you'll see again that we've got the positively charged holes drawn for the P-type and the negatively charged electrons drawn in the N-type. So firstly we have that a positive hole may drift into the N-type, but we may also have an electron drifting into the P-type, that should say P-type there, and this process continues until static charge prevents further drift across the junction. This then creates something called the depletion layer or depletion region, where we've got this potential difference or potential barrier set up in the middle here. And remember this is going to prevent any further charge from moving across the depletion region, unless you do something to the material. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.